Hello, this is Instructor Williams. I am the Technology Instructor for the Antioch Public Library District. Thank you for tuning in today. Our lesson will be on pivot tables in Microsoft Excel 2016. Our objectives for today are to create a pivot table, to seek out information within the pivot table, and to use the drill down feature to expand certain information. Pivot tables. The purpose of pivot tables is to create a table of specific information from a larger table to make searching easier. To get going with the lesson, we need to open up a file for pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to come down here to my File Explorer. And I'm going to come over to my tech class, look up Microsoft Excel because I have a preset table for this. I'm going to come to cell 2016 intermediate pivot tables and charts. And we need to come up to pivot tables and charts, opening up the file titled pivot table. So this is the pivot table that we will be working with today. It is a sales chart displaying representatives, what region they worked in, the items they're selling, how many items that they sold, what the unit cost is, what the total is, and the order date. Creating a pivot table. So in order to make a pivot table, the first thing we need to do is to highlight all of the information. So we're going to start with A1, click, and then drag our cursor down until we get all the information highlighted. This goes all the way down to G44. Then we want to come up into the Insert tab up here at the top. Click on that and come over to the tables group. It's the very first one on the left side of the ribbon and simply click the icon pivot table. We get this pop-up window asking us how we want these pivot tables to go. So it says select a table or a range. We're just going to say table one because it's all highlighted. And down here we're going to choose where we want the pivot table reports to be placed. We're going to choose a new worksheet. You can do it inside the existing worksheet, but it makes the information a little bit more cumbersome because you're dealing with it on the same page. So we're creating a new worksheet to make it easier. So what we're going to see is down here in the bottom, right now we have one sheet that says sales orders. We're going to create a new worksheet. And here we have down here sales orders and sheet one. So sheet one is going to be where our pivot table is. So what we're going to want to do in this sheet is determine which fields we want to analyze. And when we figure that out, we're going to drag them and drop them into these four squares over here in the bottom right. So we're going to be looking for who sold how many units of what item in which region. To get the proper layout for our pivot table, it's important to know which item here, which field, is going to go into which box down here. So for this example, we want to drop the representative down into the rows section. So we see representative and rows. So over here we can see that each rep is on a separate row. Then we want to drag the item field into the filters section. I'm going to drag it here and we can see at the top this is the item field so we can filter through. The next thing we want to do is drag the region field down into the columns box. Under region, drag it into columns. And then we want to drag the units down into the values field. So this gives us our pivot table on the left here. 
And from here, we can begin sorting to find the specific info that we want. Seeking information with pivot tables. Example 1. In this first example, we want to look for how many pencils were sold in the East region. So the first thing we're going to do is come to our drop-down menu by the column labels right here and we're going to select the East region. So here it's all selected. What we want to do is unselect this one that says select all so it's all unselected and then come to the box by East and just click that one. So that way it's only going to give us the things that are done in the East region. And we can see all the irrelevant information has dropped out of the table. We only have three representative selling things in the East region. We have Howard, Jones, and Parent. And now we want to narrow the table even more so that we can focus only on the pencils sold in the East region. Now we want to use the drop down menu for the item area right here, B1. And we want to check only pencils. So first thing we need to do is come to select multiple items. So we have the check mark boxes. We need to uncheck all and then come down here to pencil, click it, and then select OK. The result gives us Jones as the representative who has sold 130 pencils in the East region giving us a grand total of pencils sold as 130. So now what we can do is we can come down and take sheet 1 right here at the bottom, double click that, change the name to East Pencils. Hit enter to solidify the name. So now we have a pivot table that shows all the pencils sold in the East region. To clear that information, we want to come up to the item label, click the filter icon, and select all. That brings everything back. Then we want to come to the columns label, click the filter icon, and select clear filter from region. So we're going to clear the filter from region. And we get back to our original information. Then we want to come back to our sales orders sheet down here at the bottom. We're going to highlight the info again, or in this case, I'm going to keep it highlighted. We're going to click the insert tab again. We're going to come back to the tables group and click pivot table again. We're going to choose to have this one made into a new worksheet. Click OK. Example 2. In this new pivot table, we're going to look for how many binders each rep sold at what cost. So how many binders, which means we want to put the item into the filter area. We want to put the unit cost into the column area and we want to drag the rep into the rows area. We want to drag the units into the rows area. Then we want to drag total into the values area. We can see that with all of this the information is so much that it goes off of the viewable page. So you have to scroll up and down to see everything. But we're specifically interested in binder sales. So we want to come to the item issue here. This is row one. We see the word item, column A, and we see column B1, all. We're going to use the drop down menu, select multiple items, uncheck all, and then check binder. And there we go.
you can see all of the irrelevant information disappear off of the table and now we're only looking at binders that have been sold by our representatives. So now we're going to look at reading this information with a little bit more clarity. We're going to come to row 13 as our example, or row 12, I'm sorry. This is Jardine. Jardine is our representative. And we can see in the grand totals for Jardine that Jardine has sold $54.89 worth of binders at $4.99 and sold $1,879.06 worth of binders at the cost of $19.99, which gives a grand total monetary sale of $1,933.95. And as we talked a little bit earlier with the bigger table, how we got those numbers is that Jardine sold 11 binders at the cost of $4.99, giving us a total of $54.89 for binders sold at $4.99. Jardine also sold 94 binders at the cost of $19.99 to give us a total of $1,879.06 worth of binders sold at $19.99. So we take the total for the $4.99 binders, add that to the total of the $19.99 binders, gives us the grand total of $1,933.95. When you look at the layout here on the itemized list, when you think of a math problem of addition, you usually have number one, number two, total. And this setup, it's a little bit backwards. So we start at the bottom, we have number one plus number two gives us the total. And since this deals with the number of binders being sold, we can come down here to sheet two, which is the one we're working on. We can rename that. So we'll double click and we can type in binder sales. Hit enter to lock that name into place. So now on our workbook, we have three worksheets. We have one sales orders, which records everything. We have East pencils, which records the amount of pencils sold in the East region, only done by Jones, 130 items. Binder sales across the board in all regions. Sold by Andrews, Gill, Howard, Jardine, Jones, Kivel, Morgan, Parent, Smith, Sorvino, and Thompson. So this gives us the total of what each rep has sold. And then gives us an absolute total of all monetary sums of items sold. So we have our three worksheets in this workbook that break down the sales information to specific areas or specific items. The drill down function. Now another neat function for pivot tables is a thing known as the drill down function. And the drill down function allows us to take a bit of information, say Jones here. When I'm looking at this, I see, okay, well Jones has sold 130 pencils in the East region. But if I wanted to expand this information a little bit, it can give me more details about that. And to do the drill down, I should just be able to come to the grand total here and double click. And it expands out the information in that pivot table. So we see Jones on January 6th is in the East region, sold 95 pencils at $1.99 a piece for $189.05. And then on August 15th in the East Region, Jones sold 35 pencils at $4.99 each, giving a total of $174.65. So the drill down function is really good to expand out information 
that has been condensed inside of the pivot tables. We can do that for the binders as well if we wanted to. We can come to Sorvino and we can double click on Sorvino's total here and it'll drill it down. Sorvino sold seven binders in 1999 in the West region on March 7th. And every time we do a drill down, it creates a new sheet at the bottom. So we keep adding to our workbook all of the pared down information that we need so it's easier to access for reports, easier to access for finances, easier to access for uh, whatever we record we need it for. The drill down function helps expand out that information. And that's it for today's lesson on Excel 2016 Pivot Tables. The summary of today's lesson is that we learned how to create pivot tables, we learned how to seek information in the pivot tables, and we learned how to use the drill down feature. Once again, this is Instructor Williams, and I would like to thank you on behalf of the Antioch Public Library District. For more technology-related courses or other library content, please click the subscribe button.